Hi, I am Yolanda Castagna. I live in Accra and I have been living in Ghana for over 26 years now with my family. October is the International Month of Breast Cancer Awareness, as many of you probably know. And today I'm here to tell you my personal story, my pink story. My pink story started in 2014, actually the year that I turned 50. And it was certainly a life-changing year for me and for my family. My son Eduardo graduated from university. Um, I lived my dream of visiting New York with the family, a dream that I had since I was a teenager. And on the same year, I celebrated the 25th wedding anniversary, a lifetime with uh, my husband Jimmy. But much more happened that year. Jimmy underwent a coronary angioscopy, and that was a, that was definitely a wake-up call. And a few months later, I found out that I had a breast cancer. How could that happen to me? I asked to myself so many times. I always lived a healthy life. I did my checkups every year, apart from one. I couldn't do my checkup in 2013. And the irony is that then in 2014, I found out that I had this breast cancer. Many pink fighters out there will agree with me that the very first feeling you have when you're told you have a breast cancer is a feeling of terror, followed by a sense of, um, of defeat and a sense of guilt. Then the journey starts, and uh, it's, uh, it's a horrible journey. And all you can do is to allow for things to happen to you and around you and just try to find normality in a life that does no longer belong to you. I don't know where I found the strength to fight, but surely the main motivation was my family. They all came closer to me to help me silently to fight this uh, horrible battle. The strength definitely comes from within. Uh, I remember thinking, I need to make it. I need to fight this battle because my family need me to. And that's indeed what happened. I was always trying to find things to do uh, with my hands or with my mind, to be busy, not to be thinking about what I was going through. And that was probably a, a way that helped me get out of, of uh, the worst part, the, which I think is the psychological part of uh, living with a cancer. Probably that's when, in my mind, I started um, conceiving an idea. An idea that came uh, quite a few months later. A couple of days after I came back from the hospital, our daughter Elisa revealed that she was expecting a baby. And that was a shocking news. Shocking to me and shocking to my husband as well. We thought we had already enough uh, uh, to deal with and this was not taken as a good news. Little did we know that rather that was a blessing. That was uh, the bright light ahead of me that gave me a reason, a reason to live for. And in fact, that light is our grandson, Karim, our blessing. Then the worst part of the journey started, and that was the chemotherapy. At least that was the worst part of the journey for me. I was no longer myself. I was emotional, always on the edge, lethargic. It was very difficult to believe that I would have made it. But again, family held me, the strength, I had to find it because of my family. It went on for a few months until I could see that I was coming to the end of it and I could come back to Ghana, back to my husband, back to my young daughter. So as soon as the oncologist said, okay, now you're good to go, you can go back to Ghana, I booked my flight. On the day I wore my face mask, remember that at that time, the face mask was not uh, fashion as it is today. Everybody was looking at me with this mask on and in a way I was completely uh, bald. I didn't have any hair, so it was definitely not a good sight. But uh, the motivation to come back was so strong, I couldn't be bothered. I took my flight and I came back to Ghana. I started a new life. And probably that's when the little idea that I conceived started taking shape. Six years later, the dream came true and Akakapa, our real estate company, from a 
Part-Time Passion is a well-established company with over 20 employees. Since I found out that I had a cancer seven years have gone by, that scar has not healed yet. And I don't think it will ever heal. Uh, despite I do my checkups regularly, I'm very particular about taking my medication every morning, about living a healthy life, it's always in your mind, it's always with you. Especially when the, the checkup time comes closer, like now, waves of fears come back. There was never a moment that I wanted to give up. Every morning I woke up ready for the fight. Every day I had something positive to look out for. And I learned to appreciate the little things in life and uh, to really appreciate all I have. The war isn't over, but I won this battle. What is my message here today? Why am I here to tell you my pink story? I want as many women as possible to know that early detection saves lives. In my case, would have made my journey much easier. I really strongly recommend that you have your breast checked every year. And if you feel anything different, or if you have a tiny voice talking to you, don't wait, book an appointment, have your breast check right away. So I want to take advantage of the Akakapa friends to raise awareness, to ensure that my voice is heard by the largest number of women that I can reach out to. This is my pink story. And if you are brave enough, tell us your story in the comments below. Spread the voice, help other women. Early detection saves lives.